Um, just wondering kind of big picture, what the winter looked like for you after obviously a pretty crazy 2020 season. Yeah, no, it was definitely a unique off season, obviously with uh, uh, COVID still going around and um, haven't had it yet. And hopefully I don't ever have it, but uh, you know, you still gotta be safe about when you get your training in and uh, your throwing program. And so it's a very uh, cautious off season for me, for sure. For sure. Um, and then as you look ahead to this year, obviously last year was interrupted. It wasn't the same kind of innings that you probably were expecting to going into the year. So from your own kind of feel, and then obviously the data that you look at, what do you, what kind of workload do you want to take on this year? You know, I'm, I'm up for everything, but uh, I think it's just, we just gotta be smart about it. You know, obviously coming off of a shortened year and we got a long, uh, long season ahead of us. And uh, I think the goal this year is to get as many innings as I can and to stay healthy all year. Uh, those are only really two goals I have. And uh, I think the rest will take care of itself as, as we get going. Cool. Thank you. Hey, next we'll go to Shay. Hey, Nate. Thanks uh, for the time today. Hope you're well. Uh, just wondering, uh, just further to, to what Ben just asked, uh, what kind of, uh, in line with trying to get you as many innings as, as possible, uh, what kind of discussions have you had with the Blue Jays in terms of um, in finding ways to perhaps creatively get ensure you're able to pitch from wire to wire across the six months? Yeah, we haven't really dove into actual like uh, game plan or like I know in uh, 2019 I started out doing the five two five two thing, uh, but they haven't said anything about that, and I don't I don't think that that's going to be the case. You know, I think they're just going to let me go out there and compete and uh, uh, just just pitch. I think uh, I'm at the big league level now, and so. It's all about just getting that experience and uh, going deep in the games. And uh, speaking of that experience, as, as you reflected on what you were able to accomplish and what you were uh, learned from last year, what were some of the, the focal points that you thought, okay, this was, this was good and this is maybe something I would like to adjust? Yeah, so I felt like I uh, early last year I was – trying to paint corners too much rather than just, you know, fill up the zone with strikes. And uh, that's exactly what I did when I came back off the, the IL, you know, kind of just attack hitters and fill up the zone. And uh, that's what I plan to do in, uh, in spring training. It's one of my goals, uh, though, uh, competitive pitches and, and strikes. And uh, I think good things will always happen when you're filling up the zone. Thanks, man. Yep. Thank you. Hey, next is Rob. Hey, Nate. Um, obviously, a lot happened. A lot went on with you last season. Um, I'm just wondering what it meant to you to come into that playoff game and, and throw the ball the way that you did and, and sort of end the season on that note. Uh, it meant it meant the world, you know, uh, being able to play the Rays. And I, I grew up a Rays fan for the longest time, uh, being grown, uh, raised in Tampa. But uh, just being able to be healthy and uh, helping the guys, you know, compete. And obviously, it didn't go the way we wanted, but I think we, we definitely showed showed a lot in those those two games and the fact that we made it to the playoffs was pretty pretty amazing and I know we're we're excited for this year and uh, we're gonna make a run at it for sure. How would you describe the way you feel physically versus the way it did a year ago and, and with your arms specifically in terms of strength and comfort and all that stuff? I'm in a really good spot right now. I'm, I'm 100% healthy. I'm feeling great. You know the training room, the training staff has really helped me out. We're, we're all on the same page right now and we're where uh, the whole goal is just to keep me on the field. And then I think we're going to be a, do a very good job at it this year for sure. Good. Thanks, Nate. Hey, over to Scott. Hey, Nate. Good to see you. Just kind of along the same lines as that. I mean, take us back to that kind of flexor strain and how scary was that for you? And did you have to do anything um, maintenance-wise this, this winter or want to do anything maintenance-wise this winter to, to maybe, um, you know, change anything you've done because of that? Yeah, so it was kind of scary at first because I really haven't had any elbow issues since my, my surgery in, in high school. So when uh, I started getting some elbow fatigue or whatever, I didn't really know exactly what it was. So I've only really experienced one thing with my elbow, and that was uh, a stress fracture, and I knew it wasn't that. But, um, you know, it, it was scary. But, you know, the, uh, the training room and, and the training staff, you know, we took it head on, and they, they got me right. And, uh, you know, we, we were smart about it, and I was able to return. I was 100% healthy. And going to the off season, you know, I was I was ready to go, ready to get after it because I had my sights set on 2021. And now that we're here, and that you know, I'm feeling good, and I think that's you know, we're checking all the boxes as we go, and it's it's an awesome feeling. 
um, just because of that situation and, you know, maybe some of the creative uh, ways that you're going to be used this year, just to keep those innings down and the pitching staff as a whole, it, do you think it's better to, to stay on that schedule and, and be the first guy, you know, on the mound every day, or is it every fifth day, or is it, are you okay coming out of the bullpen and maybe a piggyback situation? I mean, I'm just, I'm excited just to pitch in the big leagues uh, this year and whatever role that may be, whether it's starting behind Ryu or, uh, coming in after him in a relief appearance, you know, whatever, whatever it is, whether rotation or, or bullpen, you know, I'm, I'm excited for whatever is to come and um, I'm ready to compete. Thanks, Nate. Appreciate it. Yeah, you're up, Rosie. Hi, Nate. Um, further to some of the questions you've been asked, I was wondering how are you different from the Nate Pearson who reported a spring training a year ago and what have you learned about yourself? And I don't mean so much as a pitcher, but between the ears. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I learned a lot last year, just mainly about how to take care of my body, you know, how to communicate how I'm feeling to the training room, uh, the staff there and like a uh, day-to-day -day basis, you know, if I have something coming up my, my health wise, you know, we, we tackle it right away or they have a plan for it. I felt like last year I kind of put myself in the corner as being a rookie and uh, not really expressing, you know, um, being smart about how to handle my body. And now I've learned so much more. And uh, especially over this off season training here, all off season in the, in the new facility and uh, just getting acclimated. I think it puts me in a real good spot coming into spring training. How about just as a follow-up um, emotionally uh, learning how to deal with the big league uh, with the big leagues. Um, how have you developed in that area? Do you think? You know, it's it's definitely uh, the only thing that I'm really lacking is big league experience, and so I'm excited for this year to to get a whole bunch of that um, experience and just learn from it. And uh, you know, there'll probably be ups and downs, but it's you know, it's all about riding the wave and you know, uh, being smart about many different things and just competing. Thank you. Yep. Hey, you're up, Arden. Hey, Nate, um, just thinking about that first big league experience last year, being in that environment, you know, on a big league mound, feeling the emotions and the, the adrenaline, did you kind of, you know, even getting back to wanting to fill up the zone more, did you kind of learn something about balancing, throwing hard and, and throwing more accurately? Yeah, definitely. Uh, in, in the minors, you can definitely get away with it being a little erratic because Velo can, uh, can help you out at times. But, you know, I definitely learned that up in the big leagues, you know, you can't just throw it hard and be and spray it a lot. You got to attack the zone and uh, throw strikes and competitive pitches more, more often than not, you know, there's, there's a lot of times last year where I would just waste pitches, whether it be just non-competitive fastballs up or whatever. So it's all about making those uh, competitive misses as well, you know, attack the zone. And when you miss, don't miss by a drastic amount, you know, let, let that miss serve something. If you're, if you're going in on a guy, you know, you want to miss in rather than, you know, missing over the plate, you know, if anything you miss in and you brush them off the plate, it serves a purpose, you know? So it's, that's the little stuff that I've been kind of learning, you know, as I, as I mature up here in, the, in spring training and everything. So it's, it's been fun. You definitely threw a lot of fastballs last year, but you know, I'm kind of curious about the secondary stuff, which you're always working on. Like, do you feel like you were able to make some strides this off season in terms of, you know, keeping the slider and curveball distinct and, and things like that? Yeah, so the goal with the slider this year was, uh, this offseason was keep it uh, a little bit harder and sharper, you know, keep it around my 87, uh, 80, 86 to 88 range. Um, it, I feel like if it goes below uh, kind of 85, it gets a little too slurvy and it's not as good of a pitch. And then i uh, also been really working on my curveball. It's, uh, it's come a long way. Um, had a live BP yesterday, threw a couple good ones. Um, but uh, that's, that's definitely going to be a big pitch for me this year. Thank you. You're up, Mark. Hey, Nate. I know you guys have no control over these things. But what was it like watching from a distance as your team goes out and signs George Springer this winter, signs Marcus Semien, and brings in, you know, some pretty big names to help you guys take that next step? Oh, it's only motivation. You know, we, we see our front office making moves like that. It only gets us more exciting because they're, they're trying to put the best team out in the field, and we can see that in the moves they made. And so the, the talk around camp is just pure excitement. We got a brand new facility, um, a, a new team, a bunch of new, new guys coming in with new roles. And, uh, you know, we're just looking to compete and take down whoever we want. So it's going to be, it's going to be a fun year. Thank you. Hey, we'll go back to Rosie. Uh, Nate, I know that you're a, a, a devotee of data and um, analytics and I, 
I'm wondering how that served you so far. And if you're at the point now where you can sort of instinctively synchronize that knowledge as opposed to uh, necessarily always looking at the numbers and scrutinizing them. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I learned learned a lot from like Rapsodo data and TrackMan data that I don't really have to look at it every pitch or every every outing per se. I can kind of see just by the shapes of my pitches and how the the hitters are reacting. Like I can definitely tell. Like last year, I knew my slider wasn't doing what it was supposed to do because of the velo and just the action of the pitch and uh, the takes that were that guys were taking on it and also the swings. So it's like. Once I see those things, then I can look at the data and be like, oh, this is why it's doing this, or this is why, you know, just it's just finding out different ways to get better. And just as a follow-up, do you think it's uh, it's more significant now or more meaningful? Um, concentrate maybe on the velocity rather than throwing over 100? Yeah, you know, I, I felt like coming up with the minors, that was a big stigma for me. You know, he throws hard, he throws hard. But, uh, you know, this year uh, – that's that's always a good thing to be known for, but I want to be known for as a as a great pitcher. And uh, right now, that, that what that looks like for me is pounding the zone and uh, throwing strikes. And so that's what I'm really focusing on. And, you know, velo will come when I'm when I'm attacking the zone. The velo is going to be there, no doubt. And uh, I think that's that's the main thing I'm focusing on. Thank you. Okay, Shay. Hey, just uh, wanted to follow up a little bit on. Uh, the, what you were saying to Arden about uh, about the secondary stuff. I mean, just in terms of overall usage, I mean, you had, last year you're about 50% fastball, 38% slider. Is that sort of the the broad type of mix that you want to have, or have you given a lot of thought over the offseason about sort of adjusting pitch usage and being either more aggressive with the fastball or maybe more aggressive with the secondary? Yeah, definitely going to be more aggressive with the secondaries. I feel like. Uh... I mean, I really only I only made four starts, so it's a it's a small sample size to really take from. But uh, sure. I felt like in uh, my especially my last two starts where I, I struggled a little bit, it was it's kind of like I couldn't really get to those those favorable counts where I can throw you know my good off speed or whatever. I was felt like I was always battling back with my fastball or my slider, which are you know my top two pitches. So I kind of put myself in a corner where I had to throw those two to be competitive. And uh, this offseason, I really worked on just being able to throw all the, all four for strikes. And, you know, I've definitely seen um, some increase in, in just the consistency of throwing strikes with those pitches. And it's really only gets me excited for this year. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks for your time today, Nate. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.